full of voters from the greater D.C. area. They have questions for Speaker Ryan, so let's get rolling. There's independents, Democrats, Republicans here from this entire area, and they have specific questions about right. how this may affect them. Right. Um, let's start with Wendy. Wendy, where are you? Where's Wendy? If you can stand up and uh, say your name, where you're from, and what your question is. Sure. Hi, Speaker Ryan. Good hey, evening. Wendy. Hi. My name is Wendy Osefo. As a millennial and as a professor at Johns Hopkins University, my question is rooted in higher education access and affordability for families. So currently, if you work as a TA and you're a graduate student, you have money that you get and you also have tuition that's paid directly to the institution. Uh, we have right now the qualified tuition uh, revision uh, provision that is with the taxes and that income is not seen as taxable. Right. But with the GOP and the plan that's set forth, it would be seen as taxable income. So how do we make it so higher education continues to be affordable and accessible for all people and making sure that with this great plan, that's able to be sure. done? Sure, it's, really, it's a really good question. This is a very niche piece of the tax code, which, which, which it is, as Wendy says, which is um, if you particularly work for a university, you can get uh, free tuition, which is given to you, and, and that is not now considered income, and this would be considered income under the House version of the plan. I don't think the Senate does that. So there's a difference in positions between the House and the Senate. Um, this is not what we call a major revenue raiser, but this is something where we're just trying to clean out the code with a lot of the stuff and then just give everybody lower tax rates in the first place. Let me just give you a sense of it. Um, a TA probably doesn't make a whole lot of money. Um, I, I know TAs, I've spent a lot of time with TAs when I was younger. Um, let me just give you, I'll crank some numbers on the way over here. A single person, because most TAs are single. Let's say you make $48,000. Here's what a TA gets. Your standard deduction goes from $6,300 to $12,000. Your tax rate goes from 25% down to 12%. You get a $1,300 tax cut. So if you take a look at just the tax cuts in here, lowering the tax rates, doubling the standard deduction. If you have kids, you, your tax credit for child goes from $1,000 to $1,600 per child. So what we're basically saying is, instead of giving you a tax cut for one thing you get or one thing you do at one time, why don't we just lower your tax rates for all time and let you do whatever you want with your money? There's a philosophical difference here, and that is the way the code basically works today is you pay your taxes, you do certain things, and then you send your money to Washington, and then maybe you'll get some of your money back if you do what they approve of. In this case, it's got to be a qualified tuition and reimbursement system, lots of hoops, lots of loopholes, what we're basically saying is let's just get rid of the loopholes and just give you your money in the first place. Let people keep more of their own tax dollars in the first place. Take less money out of your pocket, out of your paycheck to begin with, and then you decide what you want to do with your money. That's the purpose of this. The, the median household in America makes about $59,000. That person who runs that household is going to get an $1,182 tax cut the first year. The average family, the median family in America makes about $73,000. That's two parents, two kids. They're going to get a $1,600 tax cut the first year. So the purpose, what we're trying to say is, let's just clean this up, simplify it, and then let, keep, let people keep more of their money in the first place and let them decide what they want to do with their own money. And that is the basic philosophy behind this Tax Cut and Jobs Act.